So we are going to talk about Revoxy. Okay? We're going to talk about Revoxy. Like I told you, this is an acronym which represents electromagnetic waves. Okay? So this R here stands for what we call radio waves. Radio waves. Okay? So these are called radio waves. So the R stands for radio wave. Now, let us talk about where this radio wave can be applied. Okay? So one of the major places that radio waves are applied is in telecommunication. Telecoms. Telecoms. Okay? It is applied in telecommunication. So any form of communication is radio wave. For example, how are you able to watch me right now from the comfort of your home? It is because of telecommunication. And what is responsible for telecommunication? It is radio wave. You can stay at the comfort of your house and call somebody. The person will be able to answer you within split seconds. It is because of what? Radio waves. Okay? You can stay in your house, watch any shows that are, that are happening live. You see that it is due to what? Radio waves. So radio waves make our life very easy. Your social media, your WhatsApp, your Facebook, all these things work because of the presence of radio what? waves. So they are used in telecommunications. Okay? Now, apart from that, we also have I, which stands for infrared waves. So this is called infrared. Okay? infrared so i stands for infrared and then you should know that these infrared waves are also called heat waves okay they are also called heat waves they are also called heat waves so from the name infrared or heat waves you can see that it is the kind of radiation or wave emitted from heat sources okay heat sources as a human being you are a heat source because internally you have you have um your body working and as your body is working and moving because of that constant motion heat is being generated internally inside your body so as a human being you are a heat source okay now this infrared wave or heat waves can be applied in several cases but one of the major applications of infrared is we have it can be used in ir cameras okay ir cameras that is infrared cameras you see that they make use of um, infrared in these special cameras. Apart from that, you can also have satellite imaging. It is also used in satellite imaging. Satellite imaging. Okay, we have satellite imaging. And there are several other applications there, but these are the major ones that you should pay very close attention to. Then, on the other hand, we have V. So, V here stands for visible light. Visible visible lights okay so ensure you are taking note of all these things that is happening okay so we have visible lights now visible lights definitely this is the reason why you can see me right now and i can see you if you were here okay so visible light is used for sights is used for sights and then to just tell you you should know that among all these electromagnetic waves that we have mentioned, the one that can only be seen by the naked eye is visible light. You cannot see any of these with your eye. Okay? Any day you start seeing any of these things, ye shall die. Okay? So you cannot see any of these with your naked eye. The only one you can see is V, which is visible light. Now, on the other hand, we have U, and U stands for ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. U stands for ultraviolet. So, what is ultraviolet? Now, ultraviolet is usually emitted from sun, naturally. So, it is from the sun. It is from the sun. Okay? We can say, for now, that ultraviolet is the raw form of sunlight. Okay, raw form of sunlight. Now, but when these ultraviolet rays are emitted by the sun, it doesn't get into our atmosphere. Why? Because we have the ozone layer which removes these UV rays from the sunlight and only the safe part get to us. Okay? If that ultraviolet is able to pass through our ozone layer and get to us, the effect is that we are going to start having skin burns. We're going to be having skin cancer. So UV or ultraviolet rays are dangerous to human beings. If it is present, 
in the sunlight that we take in every day. So imagine what happens to vampires. You know, when we watch vampire movies and you observe that vampires are normally scared of coming out at um, during the afternoon, it is because of UV. So vampires are, are what? They, they don't like UV rays, okay? They don't like UV rays because they will just die. They will just die. So that is what would have happened if we don't have an ozone layer. It means during the day we have to just stay out stay in our houses everywhere will be dark and then at night we can come out okay so that is ultraviolet rays or uv rays and of course it is going to have some application okay now one of the major applications of ultraviolet rays is in sterilization okay sterilization 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 that is one of the applications of uh, uv rays sterilization now when we say sterilization we are talking about uh, removal of germs okay removal of germs decontamination and all that so imagine you are working in a lab where you have to make sure that what you are working on must be safe okay so it means you have to decontaminate yourself before you enter the lab or when you're done from the lab, you have to decontaminate yourself before coming out to meet people. So one of the things that you can use to decontaminate yourself is UV rays, okay? But of course, because of science and technology, they can actually reduce the effect of that UV rays on you, okay? So that is the example of the application of UV rays, okay? Then, on the other hand, we are going to talk about X-ray, okay? We are going to talk about X-ray. Now, of course, we are not going to discuss how X-rays generally are produced. That would be on a different topic. But when we talk about X, so X stands for X-rays. Okay? Now, these X-rays are of two types. We have the soft, take notes, and the hard. We have the soft, we have the soft, and the hard. We have two types of X-ray, soft X-ray and what? Hard X-ray. Now, these two X-rays, these two types of X-ray um, have their own different applications in different fields, okay? For example, this hard X-ray can be used in industries for study of structures of materials, okay? What do I mean by that? You open your chemistry textbook and they say something like diamond has octahedral shape. How did they know? Did they enter into diamond to know that they did not enter into diamond? How did they know? They radiate that diamond with x-rays. And with x-rays, they can be able to use it to what? To um, know exactly the structure of that material. Okay? So, hard x-ray used in industries for um, checking or observing or um, or studying the structure of what materials that is what it is used for in the industry now another place we can make use of hard x-ray is also in hospital so hard x-ray can also be used in hospital so we have talked about industrial use industry now we can also use it medically we can also use it medically we we'll talk about the medical use so when we say medical use it is normally used for cancer therapy okay for cancer therapy cancer therapy okay imagine a patient that has cancer so you see that most of the patients usually go for radiology where they will use some radiations to what to try to treat those cancer okay so one of the radiations used in the treatment or management of cancer is hard what x-rays now on the other hand we also have soft x-ray where is it mainly used it is mainly used in the hospital. That is medical use. It is usually used medically for scans. For scans. For scans. So if you are watching me out there and you've actually gone for an x-ray scan before, then this is what we are talking about. Okay? So if you've gone for an x-ray scan, the doctor will use the soft x-ray to be able to check whatever is happening to you. He will use it to check whatever is happening to you and tell you exactly where your fault is coming from. Okay? So that is what we have as X-ray. Then, on the other hand, we have Y, which stands for gamma rays. Okay? Gamma rays. Don't say because we have Y here, you will call it Yama. It is not Yama. It is gamma ray. Okay? So the Y is from a Greek alphabet called gamma. So we call this gamma ray. 
Now, under radioactivity, you will understand that gamma rays are produced during the process of radioactivity, which is the spontaneous disintegration of an unstable nuclei to release radiation. So one of the radiations emitted during the process of radioactivity is gamma rays. Now, once these gamma rays are emitted, once these gamma rays are emitted, we can use it for several applications. Okay, now one of the places that gamma rays are used is also in medicine. It is also used in medicine for cancer therapy. So they normally use this in cancer therapy. That is the one of the major places gamma rays are what are applied in. And then, of course, these gamma rays are also major components or major constituents of. Um, a nuclear bomb. So whenever there is um, a nuclear bomb expl uh, explosion, so one of the things that are emitted during that nuclear blast is gamma rays, which is very, very bad. So one of the disadvantages of gamma rays is that it causes what the biologists call mutation. It causes mutation. It causes mutation. Okay, so that is why it is one of the most dangerous. So amongst all this radiation we have talked about, gamma rays is the most dangerous because it causes what? Mutation. Okay, so that is that about these electromagnetic waves. So the next thing we're going to talk about is we are going to discuss about some important terms you need to know whenever you're talking about waves. After talking about those terms, then we now talk about equations of waves also.